The foundations are cracking, grade eights. It is lesson 14.4, and it's all about the cracks in the foundation. How did isolation contribute to the end of Japan's closed feudal society? We're gonna learn that and more. So stick around and let's learn something. Right, lesson 14.4, we are going to learn how isolation, as good as it was that we've mentioned in the last chapter, uh, sorry, in the last lesson, as good as it was, it led to a lot of great things, the golden age of culture, for example, it did also contribute to the end of Japanese closed feudal society, okay? And that is because no matter how tight they kept the controls in Japan, its foundation started to crack. And we see this when McDonald arrives and he becomes, uh, or he gets questioned by officials about the outside world. And McDonald is giving all kinds of information about the outside world, what it's like, what's taking place. And Japan knew it was only a matter of time before the West comes knocking. So these officials give McDonald a job teaching English to interpreters. And Later on, the interpreters uh, go on to help with negotiations between Japan and the United States. The United States does come knocking. The United States asks to come in. The, the United States basically bullies their way in to Japan, and Japan knew this was going to happen. It wasn't a um, it wasn't a big surprise. It's just when was it going to happen is what they didn't know. And McDonald even though he was a teacher and he was teaching English to these interpreters, his time in Japan wasn't that long. People often think he was there for years. He was actually only there, he was actually there for less than a year. He was there for only 10 months. And this cracks, these cracks in the foundation, we're starting to see this because the class system, that hierarchy has started to unravel. It's an upheaval at this point because the merchants are gaining more and more power. How are they gaining more and more power? Well, they're getting more and more money. And you remember from the previous lesson, I said money talks. Remember I mentioned those floating worlds that existed where your status didn't really matter. It was more the money that you had. Well, money talks. And that combi combined with forcing peasants to pay these high taxes that they just were sick of paying and the daimyo almost becoming bankrupt because of the alternate attendance that was required by them where they had to go to Edo uh, every other year and maintain, maintain two houses and two living quarters. They were almost bankrupt. The samurai, things were very peaceful, so they had very little work to do. So some started marrying outside of their social class, which was a big no-no. All of this was making people upset and the people were looking at somebody to point the finger to and they were pointing the finger to the Shogun because they knew that the Shogun was holding power illegally. The Shogun became powerful through warring times, through unstable times where the power really should lie with the Emperor of Japan, not the military ruler. So you got that. Your, your class system is in upheaval. People are looking to lay blame. But then, what else is going to lead to change? Well, natural disasters are going to lead to change. Natural disasters between the 17 and 1800s led to a third of the Japanese population dying because they died of starvation. And that's not a good thing. So yes, we've talked about prosperity. Yes, we talked about uh, uh, peace and stability. But you can't stop natural disasters from happening, and that led to a third of the population dying. Peasants, they had enough. So as we saw in Renaissance times, they started moving into the cities. And during the Renaissance, well, they started doing that in Japan. The difference was there was very little work in the cities. And now the farming wasn't that good anymore either. And so the remaining farmers that were left and the remaining farms that were left we're only producing so much rice, so the, the whole idea and definition of supply and demand, which is a, a focus on the economics unit in grade nine social studies, led to this prices of or the price of rice to skyrocket. 
And the people who didn't have money, the have-nots, began attacking the people who had money, the wealthy, the haves. And when all of this was happening, the shogun didn't respond. Well, if the shogun's not responding, the people start to question, well, who's really holding this power? And all of these, these, these tiny cracks that started as tiny cracks are now getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, the whole thing is going to come cram crumbling down. So we've got your class system in upheaval. You've got disasters, and you have the ever-pressing threat of the outside world wanting in to Japan. Russia, the United States, and England, they all wanted to begin trading with Japan. And if they can't trade, then at least they were telling Japan to open up their borders just so that whaling ships, ships that are going out and fishing whales, hunting whales or fishing whales, I'm not sure which term would be correct. Uh, if it's a mammal, I don't know what you, I'm not sure. You know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, they wanted these ships to be at least provided with coal and water, at least that, okay? And the Shogun, this is where the Shogun is starting to take a stand. And he's like, no, I don't think so. We're not letting these outsiders in. So the Shogun does finally respond and responds with the no second thought expulsion order. Long story short, the no second thought expulsion order orders Japanese um, people to destroy any incoming ship that they see. Well, that's not going to cut it for the United States. And the United States decides enough is enough. We are going to force our way into Japan if we need to. And we will be learning um, in the next chapter about Commodore Perry and what he does uh, on his way into Japan as a show of force and what they're going to do. But we are going to take a look at the United States. And the United States had a real interest in having Japan open up. From um, your textbook, I stole this. So we're going to take a look at the geography. So it wasn't long after that Oregon and California became part of the United States. And now the country has borders along the Pacific Ocean. And well, this is good because we are going to get a transcontinental railway. You remember this from grade seven social studies, I hope, if you've been paying attention. We're going to have a railway that's going to connect the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, which means now we have a direct ship route to China from the United States, okay? That's going to be huge. The, from, so from a, from a geography point of view, the United States was, was poised to go and trade with Japan, whether Japan likes it or not. From an economic point of view, the gold rush that was taking place in the United States meant that there was more money to buy, to buy goods, like actual physical goods. And the United States saw Japan as a source of new and different products, something different. And people always want something different, something unique. The rapidly growing American industries, they were producing all kinds of things and they saw Japan as a perfect market to sell and to trade these products. So in the middle, we've got these next two points. The United States, they had massive investments in the whaling industry in the Pacific. So that was happening because of geography, meeting economy. So they needed Japan to open up its borders, at least to provide those ships with coal and water, which was really needed. And finally, again, with those whaling ships, they needed stations between San Francisco and Canton, which is in the Pacific, they needed something there where those ships could refuel, get water, and get any additional supplies that were needed. All of this, the threats from the outside world, disastrous uh, natural disasters, and your class system in upheaval, those cracks, like I mentioned, they turn into massive cracks. And eventually, this period of isolation comes crumbling down and Japan will open up its borders. And that will be at chapter 15.
All right, I want you to head over to your notebook and complete the questions for this part of the chapter.